so please uh, uh, join me in uh, thanking and uh, congratulating vmft for uh, giving us an opportunity to meet and uh, talk about uh, the subject today you know yesterday day before yesterday um, uh, mr narayan murthy uh, um, you, you know narayan murthy he is the founder of infosys company so he said uh, uh, we should invest 1 uh, billion uh, dollars every year in india for the teachers and for every teacher who is retiring in india every teacher we are who is retiring we should give 1 million dollars as a gift india should give 1 million dollars gift to every uh, teacher who is retiring of course all this information will go to mr modi and the government and uh, uh, india should invest in teachers so we are uh, very uh, grateful and uh, thankful to all the teachers i think i think all of your teachers i believe uh, all uh, anybody is not there in the teaching uh, profession all are teachers i think all of you so we are we are very uh, we are very grateful for the opportunity okay now how many of you have seen uh, brain operation anybody has seen you have seen you have seen in youtube or real <laughs> okay i'll show you i'll show you brain operation this is uh, i am doing an operation in bangalore you see i am i am standing and there is a nurse and assistant on my right side and uh, patient is on the table patient is sleeping patient is comfortable no pain sleeping comfortably head is open what what i am seeing in the microscope you can see on the screen there same thing and there are instruments to cut when there is blood comes out to stop the blood we can stop the bleeding using some instruments and you know in car now you have google maps and gps you know you know where you are going for brain surgery also we have gps this is the gps system this one so we in between if you want to know where we are in which direction we are heading we can see all that see you can make out easily i am i am doing the operation but most of the things are developed by engineers not uh, not uh, uh not doctors are end users like somebody will make a cell phone and you will use the phone like that we are doing surgery but uh, all these things all these things came from uh, uh, basic science uh, uh, people so my my experience is in seeing patients giving medicines doing surgeries i am not a uh, speaker about learning and memory i am not an expert madam knows better than me dr chandra that's why i requested madam also to come but uh, working uh, uh, almost for 40 years operating on different parts of the brain we learn about structures functions and i thought i can share some of our idea about memory and learning you may have lot of questions so we will we will we will discuss what what we want to tell what you want to know and all those things and uh, this is not that we'll just give one uh, one hour lecture and then we'll uh, disappear if you have lot of specific questions you please let us know whatever we know we'll answer if you don't know we'll also check the literature we'll tell you if required we'll come again and if you have any specific issues like uh, some patients and all those things that mean, needs lot of work we can discuss about that also later so regarding uh, learning and memory all of us have got our own views and ideas so there may be some difference but what we are going to talk 
is all published in the books so it's documented if you want you can uh, even uh, check with uh, uh, google chat gpt whatever resources you have and this will be uh, this will be more like a it's not that i am talking and you are listening this is all of us are discussing like a like a friendly group we are we are discussing so we learn from each other i'll tell you few things you can also tell me few things from what you understand you know and some of these images you know they are from uh, i just took it for uh, just to make you uh, understand uh, easily and uh, we have uh, dr chandra and uh, me we have no uh, commercial or financial interest uh, uh, in this uh, presentation so this is how we are uh, i am going to speak so after a very brief introduction i'll take you through the brain uh, uh, structure uh, function how brain evolved over a period of time and then i'll speak about little bit about learning and uh, memory uh, which is of interest to you and uh, there are from important concepts are there how to improve memory how to improve learning capacity so th those concepts i'll introduce okay i'm sure uh, uh, through you uh, hundreds and uh, thousands of children will eventually will uh, will benefit with the, this uh, exercise and also uh, if time permits after madam finishes her talk again i'll come and tell you about few things which can which can uh, harm the brain which can damage the brain also few things which will help in recovery from this one i'm not going to talk about uh, Uh, brain tumors and all those things that uh, just sim things which can on a day to day basis what can harm and what can help and then we'll uh, we'll conclude with that and uh, so now i i need a volunteer uh, can uh, anybody tell me what do they see in this picture any yeah you uh, please tell your name and I'm Najma. I see a woman in the picture with um, hair, then I think some wool and cloth like thing, and a feather on her head. That is what I see. She's young, it seems, but the hair seems white. I don't know. I'm confused. <laughs> Madam, you want to tell? What do you see? A a woman. looking forward oh lady young lady looking forward all all of you think uh, do you, uh, anybody uh, sir you wanted to tell something yes yeah. sir the hind legs of a lion with a tail sorry hind legs of a lion with a tail you think lion yeah of course all all ladies are like lions only <laughs> <laughs> yeah sir <laughs> an old lady face down see hold it are there there is only one lady sir <laughs> and uh, there is one uh, in picture there is one young lady then old lady and one line also <laughs> there is only one picture sir anybody you are, you are very serious you want to make some comment <laughs> next okay so so you see there is a picture but your understanding your interpretation of the picture is different anyway uh, who is the english teacher among you english teacher you are english teacher sir can you read this for me i'll give the mic to you can you read this uh, please read madam i'll just try sir I no no please it's okay no sir please read i could not believe that i could actually understand what i was reading it doesn't matter in what order the letters in a word are the only important thing is that uh, the first then and the last letter be in the right place uh, the rest can be a total ma mess 
and you can still read it without a problem. This is because the human mind does not read every letter by itself, but the word as a whole. Amazing, huh? See, in that, uh, in that paragraph, I think except, uh, maybe except the B and except those by, except those one or two things, all are mistakes. But you are able to read, you are able to read 90% without a mistake, without any problem. See how, how a uh, human brain looks at uh, visuals, images and looks at uh, letters, reading, reading how, how brain reads, how brain looks at pictures and also how sound is interpreted. When there is a sound, how it is uh, interpreted. Hmm? So, I need a volunteer. What is the name of the bird? You want to tell, sir? Parrot. Uh, how many agree that parrot or any other bird? Eagle. Huh? Parakeet. 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 All agree with parakeet or any other difference? Yes, madam. Huh? Kalabai. Oh, another, another bird, okay. Okay, any, any other bird? So, don't believe whatever you see, whatever you hear. Sometimes it can be fooling also. It's a lady. It's not a bird. It's a lady. I'll show you again. You, if you, it's a lady. So sometimes brain can fool you. So what you see, what you hear, all you have to, you have to analyze very carefully. Okay. 2400 years ago, Greek physician, Hippocrates, he said, all our emotions, we, we love, we cry, we are happy, we are unhappy, all things, all things come from the brain, 2400 years ago. You see, human beings, all of us, we are existing on the planet Earth, only for 200,000 years. Earth has formed 400, four, four and a half billion years ago. Earth has formed four and a half billion years ago. But we came onto the planet only 200,000 years ago. You see, we started speaking only 70,000 years ago. And agriculture, until now, like uh, nomadic life, only agriculture, my house, my land, my family, all those things started only 12,000 years ago. And uh, the knowledge revolution started only 500 years ago. Industrial revolution, all these machines like steam engine, all those things started only 200 years ago. Computers started maybe 20, maybe 20, 30, 35 years ago. And then so many things are going to happen in the future. Now there is artificial intelligence, there is a machine learning. So the way we live and the way we work, all things are going to change in the future. So, according to evolution, every time a new species comes to the earth, some brand new brain will not be made. It's like you have a phone, old phone. When the company makes new phone, they will use most of the old phone. They will increase a little bit here, there and all those things. Sound will increase, photos will increase, that memory will increase, storage will increase like that. So, human brain also evolved like that, one, one after the other. So, two primary objectives of every living person is, first thing is survive, you survive, you survive. And then, second thing is, you, should, you have a progeny. Okay, that's how the brain uh, evolved. Now, I'll give you 
few minutes i'll give you some idea about uh, brain this is this is a real brain this is not a photograph this is a real brain you can see this is the eye this is the ear and this whole thing is real brain uh, all of you know when you fold the sari you know long uh, six yard sari you can fold it nicely and then put it in a small box nature has folded the brain and then put it nicely inside the skull otherwise our heads you know you know size <laughs> it will be 1.6 meters <laughs> from my head will be my brain will be from here up to the wall that will be the size of our brain and this brain is not solid it is uh, i i know how many of you know turkish sweet delight turkish delight there is a turkish delight is a sweet it is it is like a jelly it's like a semi solid so human brain is semi solid it is just made with uh, glucose uh, fat sugar uh, protein some uh, minerals trace elements it's only 2% of uh, body weight suppose if if we are 60 70 kilos the brain is only about less than 1 and 1/2 kilos but it it takes 20% of all energy like we we eat food you know food has got glucose we breathe air air has got oxygen oxygen will burn the glucose just like oil petrol burning and car moving so this but this oxygen will burn glucose producing energy and that energy will charge the body and the brain just like we are charging our phone you know <laughs> this oxygen and glucose is charging our brain brain works by electrical and chemical means so every day it has to be charged then only brain will work you can see we can hear we can talk and all those things okay so when we remove that outer layers this is how inside uh, outside is like a cortex inside is known as white matter see these are all fibers you know this is the front uh, side of the body that's the top that's the back you see these fibers these fibers they are so thin even much much smaller than hair actually if you remove all these fibers from one one person's brain one person brain and put these fibers one after the other you know what is the length it can circle our earth two times that is the enormous capacity of this uh, of these fibers okay so this is the middle this is the real real head real head after person passed away for scientific research the head was cut in the middle this is this is how all our heads will look exactly same you can see the nose tongue eyes ears and the brain you know it's organized in a hierarchical there is a family head and then there are young people there are small children one will tell the other like that each part will tell other part what to do and all those things so there is a hierarchical system so ah yeah that uh, it's a it's a there is a chemical injection to outline blood going from heart to brain uh, is red and after using all the oxygen and glucose it will come down to the heart that is all colored in in blue they are all they are all for uh, study so you know uh, human brain has got enormous uh, capacity this is how actually you 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 quantify the computer uh, memory into uh, all that uh, uh, we we call uh, 1 mb 2 mb uh, 1000 mb 1 gb and terabytes petabytes exabytes and all those things this is how the the classification and you know human uh, brain each one of us is got 2.5 gigabytes of uh, uh, um, this one 2.5 petabytes of uh, uh, digital memory storage memory so many things human brain is capable of uh, uh, remembering okay so this uh, uh, his name is uh, wilder penfield he is a neurosurgeon working in montreal canada and uh, uh, he 
uh, almost 80 uh, 90 years ago when he was doing uh, surgery uh, in in canada uh, there is not much knowledge about which part is doing what function so he used to carefully study and electrically stimulate a brain and if brain has got function a person is talking then he used to leave it if it is not functioning uh, and causing a disease he used to remove it so that's how he has uh, uh, built uh, knowledge base which all of us subsequently benefited learned from him so this is how he ident- he identified different parts of the brain and uh, he said uh, the tongue control is you see in the side then very close to mouth control is tongue control and then that is the hand control the leg control is in the middle according to him see people pay so much of uh, their energy their life to uh, build uh, their physical appearance okay this is how everybody wanted to look like but you know how actually people are inside if you look from the brain point of view this is how they look <laughs> so outside looks are deceptive don't look at uh, skin color and uh, fair and, <laughs> and this one all people wanted to look like this but all people in fact are li- like this inside <laughs> if you look from the bra- from inside out not from outside in <laughs> from brain point of view people look like that <laughs> okay now uh, i need uh, one maths teacher who is the maths teacher please uh, raise hand you are all teachers i mean you are, you are not like students <laughs> who, who is madam you are, you are teacher you teach everything ha huh? english teacher maths any maths teacher is there okay no problem uh, you know you see uh, number of people are helping us in uh, today's meeting uh, at least uh, five six people are helping us okay suppose if there are 100 people helping us work will be done more isn't it work will be done better suppose somebody is providing lunch and only one person is serving we don't get we have to wait for long time suppose 100 people are serving so you know what are this uh, what is this number the number is 37 trillion you know what is that 37 trillion in each and every one of you in your body that many cells are working for your health in a, in all our bodies there are 37 trillion cells are there and these are the number of cells in the brain itself this is 86 billion neurons are there in the brain okay of course we carry another 37 trillion uh, bacteria virus in our bodies they are very good i mean like uh, in you you meet so many people there are many good people are there they help us like that this bacteria inside our stomach will help in digesting the food so many things they help occasionally we come across some bad person occasionally we come across some bad bacteria which causes infection otherwise they are very helpful okay so this is these cells are born they grow they do their job whatever is eye cell will see ear cell will hear here so like that they do their job and when uh, when there is a damage because of some infection injury uh, or uh, some tumor then they try to repair themselves and then eventually eventually the mother cell will become two daughter cells and then daughter cell will grow and then do its job and then daughter cell will again become two daughter cells that's how it goes on life goes on okay but unfortunately this will not happen in the brain see if you lose a skin you know you'll get new skin but in our bowel you know every day a lot of cells are damaged millions of cells again they are replaced but uh, <clears throat> in in brain and spinal cord these things will not happen okay so this person his uh, name is uh, raymond kahal he is from spain he is a neurologist so 110 years ago he said when we are born whatever brain we have same thing will remain throat life 
and uh, as we become older and older and older our brain will shrink no new part is added for that uh, work he got nobel prize he is a nobel laureate he received a nobel prize okay but subsequently subsequently science has proved that uh, some changes in the brain happen you know this uh, uh, joseph altman he studied rats you know rats smell a uh, lot of things they smell food they smell lot of things you know so when they when they smell something very bad those cells will get damaged again he, he found that new cells are forming in that this one and the uh, same way this uh, person uh, fernando he studied birds there are birds when they when during mating season when these birds sing they have new cells are formed in their brain and uh, <coughs> then this uh, 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 peter erickson is a swedish neurologist he actually tried to find out whether in humans whether new cells are born or not so he took permission from people who are dying with cancer and then after they passed away he studied their brains after giving injecting a medicine when they are alive he looked at whether those cells have got that medicine which he is injected so after he injected some new cells are born he found them in the brain then it's established that what uh, uh, kahal told 110 years ago that our brains are static and no change is not correct so they said brain is flexible brain will change its brain will change its form its structure and then and and then this uh, this is that uh, uh, neurogenesis uh, the the concept of neurogenesis so we have uh, uh, about uh, 30000 genes to control uh, all uh, our body uh, structure and function and we have uh, 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 we can smell is not one we can differentiate 10000 different types of smells and even 2% of our genome is uh, uh, meant uh, for uh, smell uh, purpose so uh, plasticity uh, ma- madam i leave it to madam to explain more about plasticity and uh, uh, resilience so see for example all of us mm. all of us uh, went through great hardship during covid so some we learned how to cope with the covid some people went to temple some people went to mass some people went to church some friends uh, some doctors uh, some family members supported and we'll we'll get over this and all those things so people who had this coping strategies resilience so that they 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 survived and those who had covid also uh, recovered so uh, that is the uh, uh, that's the importance of brain changing its structure and function now i i'll speak uh, a bit about uh, uh, memory so uh, this uh, uh, is a very famous uh, anatomy professor joseph uh, klingler so after people passed away he used to preserve uh, their brains in a very uh, very good condition and then study them in great detail so uh, he said this structure uh, here in the in the inside here this structure the structure looks like uh, if you have gone to uh, aquarium you must have seen a small uh, uh, sea horse sea horse is a very tiny uh, some 3 4 cm 3 4 cm like a like a uh, um, marine uh, creature so it's like sea horse so that the because of sea horse shape the name is hippocampus he said in entire universe this hippocampus is the most complex structure because that is the seat of memory human memory okay so you see here now th- these two are real brains real brains this brain is uh, uh, cut it's like a it's like a you you know that bread, bread slices you cut you know like that bread slices it it was cut here and this side you can see the nose and eyes so right side brain is there left side brain has been removed 
So this is the hippocampus, this structure. This is the uh, hippocampus. Now, these two structures, this is this is an artistic uh, diagram. So this is hippocampus and this is another structure called amygdala. Amygdala and hippocampus. We have amygdala and hippocampus on our right side of the head. Amygdala and hippocampus on the left side of the head. Now this morning when you left uh, your house and reached uh, VMFT, however you have come, by car, by auto rickshaw, by two wheeler, you have seen so many uh, cars, uh, so many uh, people uh, just coming across your vehicle and all those things. You didn't hit anybody. They also didn't hit you. You managed to steer and turn and uh, take break, go fast, all those things were done very expertly. You remember all those vehicles? You didn't see? You have seen? You only negotiated how to, how to avoid accident and all those things. So, all those things, what we all, all this memory actually stays in the front of the brain, front. Tonight, when you go to sleep, when you are sleeping, all things happen from morning when you woke up to night when you go to bed. All these things, you are sleeping, you are not doing anything. When you are sleeping, they will, like a, like a movie playing, they will play in the hippocampus. And hippocampus will decide. Hippocampus will decide. Okay, important, store. Okay, not important, delete. Like that. So, the encoding, conversion of uh, all the visual sounds, all this short term thing is converted into long term, long term memory. So, you remember your childhood friends, childhood uh, what you ate, what songs you heard, what movies you have seen, so many things. Because once it is converted to long term, it will stay inside. But that conversion goes through this, uh, this one. Suppose, from your house you have come today. Suppose, I am just giving an example. On the way, at some uh, junction, Kaudiyar junction, you have seen an accident. Big accident. Now, tomorrow, when you go that side, you have an accident, accident like that. Your brain will alert you. There was no, there is no accident, there, there won't be accident tomorrow. But when you go to that area, because it's it, the time, space, accident, event, all are registered in the brain. So accident. So that's how human mind, human brain, human memory will work. Okay. And also, see, Yesterday you are walking, today you are walking, no change. Tomorrow walking also there will be no change. But today after seeing all those things or even you go for a movie or you hear some, go to a temple, you have some experience. That is a new thing. That is your, your brain has to store that new information. You see some new movie, you have to remember that movie. So the part of the brain which is used for uh, memory, which is used for learning, these new cells will form. The neurogenesis is the term used when we say about new neurons are born. Okay. Now, regarding uh, this uh, memory, the hippocampus plays a very important role in remembering the time, place, because it is, that's how it's, there are two types of memory basically. One is about facts and then uh, one is about the the yeah. episodic which year uh, uh, which year uh, Sri Chitra uh, hospital is formed uh, and then who, who is uh, uh, the hospital is named after which uh, personality like that all those things and uh, you see, you see uh, if you have uh, it's like uh, uh, this uh, neurons are like your bank balance when you are born you are born with 86 billion neurons. And then as uh, the count comes down, your learning capabilities also will come down. Whereas, 
if you if you put more money in the bank and then less withdrawal you will always will have a positive balance so this new when the new cells are born they will help in learning suppose tomorrow all of you want to learn music okay so to learn music again new cells have to form and when these new cells are formed again they will help in learning so this is like a this is like a complementary to one to the other okay you go for a walk every day or you uh, learn swimming or cycling skipping dancing singing whatever you want anything new okay now uh, i'll introduce uh, to these two uh, people okay uh, uh, her name is uh, uh, brenda milner uh, she is a neuropsychologist anybody is working with children psychology ah uh, madam is there so uh, brenda is actually uh, born in uk and then studied in uh, uk and then later moved to canada montreal she worked with uh, wilder penfield the doctor who identified different parts of the brain and uh, this uh, this uh, is a very famous patient hm he is known as hm patient hm patient hm means if you put google you know actually i could not download all the videos just when you go home just put patient hm google will give you a lot of videos about him he passed away recently unfortunately he had epilepsy uncontrolled epilepsy so one doctor has removed his both hippocampi in late 50s okay so this is uh, this is the normal hippocampus on both sides this is like slicing the head in the center and you see other side he is uh, both hippocampi are removed this one this is a cavity after that after the surgery hm you meet him today he will shake hands he will ask you how are you and all those things you come tomorrow he won't remember all people taking care of him all doctors taking care of him first time every time they meet is the first time no memory no memory of new things he remembered is all childhood things all old things also he learned also he learned so hm learned new motor skills for example solving something and all those things so that's when people realized that learning is can happen independently also learning need not have hippocampus learning can happen from the front uh, part of the brain okay this i want to introduce to one more person his name is uh, eric eric candel okay eric candel madam also will speak about him so eric candel is a neurologist who worked in uh, new york uh, city okay so uh, this is a this is a c uh, this, this is a c c slug is a small marine uh, creature it will it will live in the sea sea waters he studied this uh, slish uh, this one this is the gill gill of the sea slug this one so when he was uh, just lightly touching with cotton initially the gill responded after uh, touching repeatedly there no response it just ignored it but when he used a pin prick pin prick first time it withdrew second time when there is a pin prick suddenly it withdrew every time he was pricking it was it was withdrawing very fast very rapidly very quickly so he studied how this is happening so when there is a light touch it is not going to the suppose if there is a neuron neuron like we have a head and body like that cells also have got a neuron and then axon so it is not when there is a light touch it is not going to the it is not going to the nucleus at all outside only just touching and then coming back the reflex but when there is a pin prick 
the pin can go deep inside pin can uh, cause damage there is a risk so it learned it learned that when there is a strong stimulus it made some proteins in the nucleus to remember and then immediately withdraw the gill eric candle said this is the foundation of learning all all people learn like this so and for that you know for that eric candle got nobel prize so he is a nobel prize winner in uh, uh, year 2000 23 years ago he got a nobel prize so i'll tell you what is the uh, implications of telling all those things you have you, all of you have students if uh, you give some very simple superficial information about uh, uh, how this camera works how this mic works how this computer works there will be no effect but suppose you you make the child to you tell about the computer you you allow child to touch the computer see the parts how they work how how the computer works how the circuit inside works that uh, multi modality learning is multi modality you should you should touch you should feel you should experience with all those things it is like this eric candles experiment there will be strong stimulus in the child's brain so that multi modality learning when they learn like that they'll remember for rest of their life they won't forget things you know in london uh, taxi drivers uh, taxi drivers uh, uh, how test is done you know uh, a person will be asked that uh, suppose you have to go to kollam tell what are all the routes you take person has to not uh, he should not use google google maps he should tell i'll go this way that way that way that way that way he has to tell the names so those experienced taxi drivers they were found to be having bigger hippocampi so this is an experimental experiment done in london so this is uh, the effect of uh, 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 neurogenesis okay now i'll uh, uh, just take one one or two minutes and then stop uh, with this one just uh, can you in- add increase the volume please
so uh, i want to convey one very important uh, message uh, that's why with permission i showed uh, his uh, uh, video uh, this boy is from kerala and uh, uh, he is very uh, uh, very good in uh, 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 music knowledge skills uh, unfortunately uh, he had epilepsy he had uncontrolled epilepsy so he came to nimans bangalore uh, our group they did extensive studies on him actually uh he was he was playing in a in a competition he was he was singing in a competition uh in uh, in kerala maybe you can you can see the script it's in malayalam so then uh, all my colleagues at nimans they did a uh, lot of uh, research about his brain his musical abilities and then we did operation we removed uh, his uh, hippocampus uh we did operation when uh, he was awake was actually listening to music and uh, he was identifying my colleagues are talking to him what is the raga uh, all those things he was asking and he was talking during operation so we identified all the important parts before surgery during surgery and then removed the part which is causing epilepsy here this is the damaged part this part is removed and the video you have seen that is after surgery one year after surgery he didn't lose any of his uh, speech memory learning musical abilities now actually actually from kerala now he is going to america university of berkeley invited him to do learn about western music so he is going now so that is the very important concept so there are two important concepts are there this is cognitive reserve one is cognitive reserve second one is neurogenic reserve suppose you have earned lot of money one uh, 10 rupee note falls from your hand or this one you won't become poor but you have only only 1000 rupees in your pocket and then 1000 rupees is lost you don't have anything so this cognitive reserve and neurogenic reserve are very important concepts okay children children when they study when they play uh, when they are active in sports when they are active in music uh, when they active then they have lot of neurogenesis lot of new cells are formed new connections are formed in their brain suppose like this boy underwent surgery suppose somebody unfortunately there is an accident or there is some infection or there is some tumor they recover better because already they have cognitive reserve is there even if the small part of the brain is removed still they have lot of reserve it's like having lot of bank balance so if we have to invest our life time energy it should be in children because they are the future so children who learn multimodally children who learn by repeated not 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 rote learning but by by repeated effort in different ways like seeing the computer understanding and then um, somebody if they can show the parts inside what lies inside the computer and how each part works and then if they if they have hands on experience their learning is much better so i'll stop here madam will speak uh, more after that if time permits it's already 12:15 if time permits i will tell you few things about what harms the brain and what helps the brain in recovering so with that i'll stop here uh, if you have any questions now you can ask me otherwise let madam finish 
after that yes sir after that we can ask both of us yes sir namaskaram kochu kunnungale thalaikki adikkirudhu ennu parayarundu kuttiyale thalaikki adikkirudhu ennu adu thalaikki adikkumbo ee nadi vihathil tharar varunna idu seriyano should not be hit on the head okay sir uh, let madam finish her presentation we'll discuss all these things in detail madam please come sir i i thought uh, i thought instead of hitting now they are giving cho- cadbury chocolates i think <laughs> every teacher has to go with a bag full of cadbury chocolates mine of head injuries for this normal Madam, uh, please come. 